Thank you. And uh, as you can imagine, and as you may have seen, there are lots of questions. We will make them <laughs> quick so we get to all of them. Don't run away. Let me ask you the first one. How many of you have experience with Omaritsumab? Press 1 if you have given Omaritsumab before for CFCU. Plus press 2 if you haven't. Let us see your answer now. Oh, okay, very good, 50-50. Um, we would imagine that this will get much more, and to give you guidance here, let's answer all your questions. I'm talking so fast because I have 153 questions in my hands, 15 minutes left, that means 10 seconds per question. Clive, we'll start with you. What if any screening or monitoring is involved before and during treatment with omalizumab? None. <laughs> Anna, how long has the treatment with omalizumab continued? Until the disease is gone. I love you guys. Um, is there any danger of uh, having worm infections while you're on Solaire? Can any one of you two comment? No, but um, I think in maybe tropical countries it could be a consideration, but in my practice, no. Very good. How long after application of uh, injection, so after omalizumab treatment, should the patient be looked after? So how long do they have to stay in your office before you let them go? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, Th okay. They normally stay longer because yeah. we, we work lazy. No, so okay. I, get the <laughs> <laughs> I get the impression you think this is a very <laughs> Slowly. safe drug. Slowly. Cl <laughs> Clive, patients usually see, you said that patients usually see two clinicians before they see a specialist. Does this reflect the lack of understanding of CSU at the primary care level? And if so, how do we change that? Uh, well, organizations to educate GPs, um, symposia like this, and uh, spread the word. Anna, my patient, I'm, I'm so the patient of... There's a patient who has a serum IG of 50 and is, is rust negative. Would you treat them with omalizumab? I will start with the normal doses, 300 milligrams. It will condition the, maybe the doses, although the recommended standard doses is 300 mm. milligrams, the presence of angioedema, because yeah. the angioedema really is the, the only mm. secondary endpoint in Asteria <coughs> 2, for example, and Asteria 1 that was really not controlled with uh, lower doses. But as you say, it doesn't matter whether they have IgE or not, or no, how no, much no, IgE no, they have, or their specific the IgE, exactly, they no, will no. respond, and really the IgE doesn't really... Um, I'm exaggerating, but uh, even low IgE levels uh, do... Better? Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's better. Uh, Anna, one, one more for you. How do you know that the disease is gone? Ha by, the by the patient. And ha how often do you stop omalizumab to know that the disease is active or inactive? I normally do not stop. No antihistamine, not cyclosporine, uh, if the patient suffers symptoms. The patient will send me if they need the injection or not, still they need it. Then no, there, there is not, we don't have any biomarker mm. now, any mm. predictive marker. But let's say you have a patient on mm. omalizumab, 300, comes back every four weeks, super happy patients, no symptoms. How long will you keep going before mm. you want to check if this patient has had spontaneous remission? What I do, and probably is different as you do, or probably it could be different if we are talking with the reimbursement agent, agents, agencies, what I do is try to elongate the periods of uh -huh. administration of the drug. Okay. And then let's see what patient will tell me. Okay. But I am forgetting any type of reimbursement or any type of other external condition, you know? Clive, how often do you die? Uh, sorry, Don, these are, uh, <coughs> they have a preference. But yeah, no, no. How often do you diagnose uticaria vasculitis in your chronic uticaria patients? It's uncommon. Uh, my own belief is that severe spontaneous urticaria mimics urticarial vasculitis, and you do need a biopsy, but it's uncommon. Yeah. And uh, do you find, I guess, hypocomplementemic urticarial vasculitis, and how do you treat them? Yeah. Well, hypocomplementemic urticarial vasculitis tends to present as a different illness, yeah. much more severe, more systemic symptoms, and those are very uncommon, fortunately. Very. Yeah. Anna, 
Are there any side effects, any serious side effects of formalizumab? I've read reports of sudden cardiac arrest, anaphylaxis, acute fatal respiratory distress syndrome. No, I didn't. Uh, the, uh, learning for the trials, there is no case of anaphylaxia. I didn't experience anyone. Uh, learning, from the what, learning from the trials, this is this increased uh, risk of uh, nasopharyngitis and so on in the glacial. But the only, the, me personally, the only secondary event that I've, uh, it was described by a colleague from Spain was one case where people suffer from arthralgias. Okay, so there's a lot of questions on side effects. Uh, uh, Clive, Cla you want to comment from your end? Is this interest? Is this, is this a drug that's also interesting for less severe urticaria given the side effect mm -hmm. efficacy yeah. profile? Okay. Are, this, are the side effects? I'm, I'm summarizing here, but there's five or six sure. questions here. Yeah, yeah. Are there differences between asthma patients and uh, chronic spontaneous urticaria patients in the side effects? Yeah. In terms of side effects, the, the most concerning one for everybody has to be anaphylaxis, but it's not been reported in the phase three studies for the 300 milligram dose uh, used in glacial Asteria 1 and Asteria 2. So we believe we may be dealing with a different population of patients, but clearly it, it has to be uh, uh, of great importance and interest. Yeah, thank you, Clive, for those clear but words. It really is a, ver is a safe <coughs> drug and if, if we compare what we the, the options that we have uh, obviously there is not choice okay Anna stay right on this what screening is recommended in patients treated with omalizumab no, none any Keep, screen keeps coming back and I'm sorry they really want to know this how long can you continue treatment with Solaire and when do you stop and wh how do you decide to stop I dis <laughs> <laughs> it's very empirical. Then, if, if the people uh, does not suffer symptoms, and I, I am really two months is there is not symptom, then I stop and see what happens. If you have partial remission, someone gets better but is not completely free of symptoms, what's what to do? Discontinue and try antihistamines again. Uh, What we've done till now is up-dose the dose. That means increase the dose of 400 mi 450, for example. The questions that we have, and maybe we, uh, Clive, you can help us, uh, uh, and you, Marcus, is when to stop to increase the dose. Okay, this is a question. When we've decided that is enough. Well, when is it? When is a non-responder? When is it a non-responder? When do you decide? You can answer. You have more experience. You're asking me? me? Are, is yeah. This yeah, yeah, I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the longest time you've ever waited before a patient responded or you gave up, Clive? Probably um, three months. Three months. Yeah. Okay, so three injections. Three injections. Yeah. Anna? Three injections, and if not, I updose the dose. Well, we updose after two, so you have three big centers here. We updose after two, 300, 300, 400, 600, 450, 600. If that doesn't work, we also give up. And we do see mm. patients where 450 doesn't work, 600 works. We do see patients where 300 doesn't work and 450 works. Well, I think it is just worth adding, using omelizumab off-license does have it insurance is um, implications. Thank you, Clive. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry to rush through this, but they're all so interesting and important. And I should say thank you very much for uh, patients being here and patients' organization being here. I was asked to comment on the availability of an online tool of an app. Thank you very much, which has many of the PROs that you talked about, Donald, in this. So please go and check it out. Um, GAP, of course, is the, uh, uh, the Global Uticaria Patient Organization. So uh, here is uh, also help from the patient side now. Uh, how do you choose, Anna, between omalizumab and cyclosporin for refractory chronic urticaria? Uh, if I should choose uh, with any problem of reimbursement, okay, uh, the first choice is omalizumab. That's a clear word. <laughs> and then uh, someone even wonders, it's now level three, third line. Is there any chance that it will make it to second line in the next urticaria guidelines? What do you think? We will discuss together. No? We will discuss behind closed doors <laughs> and then we will see. <laughs> Why can omalizumab cause anaphylaxis? Does it as an adverse reaction when it downregulates the IgE receptor? Someone is wondering. I don't know. Next question. I see. <laughs> is it 
Is it possible for omelitzumab to induce anaphylaxis? It keeps coming back, even yeah, if yeah, I go yeah. to the next question. Clive, you uh, want to take Clive? it? I think it, it has to be said that there have been reports. Now, whether these reports are, in fact, confusions between the natural history of the urticaria, because sometimes people get really severe urticaria episodes, which can be interpreted as anaphylaxis, that haven't yet responded to omelizumab. So it's a really tricky area. What's important to know also is that when we treat patients suffering from chronic spontaneous urticaria, we are not treating patients normally, habitually, which are a topic and with higher with risk of anaphylaxia mediated by a, an hyper, by a, a type one reaction. Then and I have to stop you here. We have 15 seconds different. and two questions left. What is the safest antihistamine in pregnancy and lactation? The safest antihistamine? Yeah. For me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, all of you, you have your preference. Me, personally, I push Spanish research. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> then I push for Evastin and for Rupatadin and for such antihistaminics, which are really very good. But okay. obviously, Desloratadin okay. is quite good. And yeah, I think in the, in, the, uh, <laughs> in the registries, there is uh, Loratadin and, and Citrusine with the biggest database for being safe. But exactly. I guess they're all... Um, uh, and can omalizumab be used on CSU patients that also have SINDU, chronic inducible urticaria, uh, like dermographism? Are there any data to support this? Yes. There are plenty of data in terms of anecdotes and case series, and sometimes these patients are very needy. But we don't have a product license, but nevertheless, these patients may still benefit and need it. There are a lot more questions. Thank you for asking them, but we will not have the time to answer them. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Clive. Thank you all for coming.